I've got a wonderful and fun video for you today on summing up a series, in particular a consecutive series, which is how this topic will be tested in the GRE and the GMAT. I say wonderful because it does come up a lot on the test, but it's also just really fun to know in general and for real life. Take the question you can see on the screen. What is the sum of all the numbers, all the integers from one to 50? Wouldn't it be cool like a party trick to know how to do that quickly in your head? For those of you who agree with that or just want to know it for the test, keep watching. We're going to start with a fairly easy example, this one, and we're going to build up to really advanced 170 or 800 level questions at the end. And the key thing with this trick is that even if you had a calculator, how would you do that quickly, right? You'd be typing in one plus two plus three. It'd take you ages. Even if you had your phone, what are you going to do? How would you even add up the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 50? You wouldn't know how to do it, right? It would take you two minutes to type it all in. So this trick even survives the modern age. It's useful even in 2021 and beyond. So how do you do it? Well, I'm sure many different people claim to have invented this method, but I know of one, Euler, came up with the following method. If you're gonna sum up the integers, say from one to 50, what he realized was that you could just pretend that all of those 50 numbers were in fact the middle number. So what he did was he found the middle number in that series from one to 50, and then said, I'm just gonna say every single number in that list is that middle number. So all I have to do is find the middle number and then multiply it by how many terms there are, and that will be the sum. How can that possibly work? Well, let's quickly find the middle number in this list, which by the way is not 25, I'll show you in a second how to work it out, but it's 25.5. If 25.5 is the middle term in this list, then if we change one, if we round that up to 25.5, obviously we're adding on 24.5, but then we're rounding down 50 down to 25.5, so we're rounding down by 24.5, so it balances out. We're rounding two up, we're rounding 49 down, so it balances out, so it's a genius method. And that's how it works. We're gonna pretend that every single term is the middle term. So once we found the middle term, we just multiply it by the number of terms. How do we find the middle term? To find the middle term in any series, no matter what it's going up by, you do the last term plus the first term divided by two. Now, let me start off and say that I've taught this to many hundreds of students and the ones who get it right on the test are almost always the ones who note it down carefully and then look back at their notes a week later or a month later. Just nodding and agreeing with me and going, oh, cool formula, Philip. That's not enough. That won't stay in your memory. You have to pause the video as I'm doing these examples, try them yourself, try to remember the formula, write it down in your notebook, and then come back to it a week later or a month later and test it out again. Otherwise, you will forget it. Anyway. The middle term is the last term plus the first term divided by two. In this case, that would be the one plus the 50, or the 50 plus one, I should say, divide by two. 51 divided by two is 25.5. So that's how I got the middle term is 25.5. Some of you may raise your hand and say, but 25.5 isn't in this list, right? It's not an integer from one to 50. It doesn't actually matter if the middle term is in the list or not. It just serves as the middle term for this calculation purpose. So that would be a good question if you ask that. 25.5 obviously isn't in this list, but it's our middle term regardless. So last term plus first term divide by two. That's how you find the middle term. It's always the same formula, I put it in blue. How do we find though the number of terms? And that is where things get tricky. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, it's obviously 50, right? We're doing the numbers from one to 50, so there are 50 terms. And you are right, there are 50 integers from one to 50. But sometimes it's not easy to spot how many terms there are. And we'll deal with that in future questions. So we have this method to find the number of terms. If you don't think you need this, if I asked you how many odd numbers are there from 77 to 143, you'd quickly realize you need a method to find the number of terms. Or I could even trick you and ask you, how many integers are there from zero to 10? Some of you wouldn't get the right answer, which is actually 11. Let's show you how there are 11 integers from zero to 10. The last term is 10. 
take away the first term, which is 0, 10 take away 0 is 10, divided by the increment. The increment is the gap between each term. And obviously, if we're dealing with the integers from 0 to 10, the gap between each term is 1. If we're dealing with even numbers, the gap between each term would be 2. Anyway, 10 take away 0 is 10. 10 divided by 1 is 10, and 10 plus 1 is 11. If you don't believe me, you can count it out with your fingers. From 0 to 10 inclusive, it's 11 terms. Now that scary word inclusive, and a lot of you are wondering, well, how do we know if it's inclusive? It's always inclusive in the GRE and GMAT. In fact, in life, it's always inclusive unless they specifically use the word exclusive, which I've never seen actually. So basically, it's always inclusive. We're always including that first term and the last term. So from that question on the top, we're including 1 and 50. That's always the case. Either way, that's the formula. Last term, take away first term, that's the range. Range divided by increment, and then plus 1 at the end because it's always inclusive. That's how to find the number of terms. Going back to Euler, if we pretend all the numbers in the list are the middle term, which we've found, all we need to do is multiply that by the number of terms, and that will give us the sum. So step three is simply to multiply those two results. So let's apply that quickly to this question. The last term is 50, the first term is 1, so 50 plus 1 divided by 2, as we saw earlier, is 25.5. The number of terms, well, the last term is 50, the first term is 1, so 50 minus 1, which is 49. 49 divided by 1 is 49, 49 plus 1 is 50. And as I've written at the bottom, sometimes the number of terms is obvious. If you see a question like this, and you've remembered my core formula, middle term times number of terms, then yes, you can skip the formula if you realize instantly that there's 50 terms. So the number of terms is 50. But if you're ever not sure, use the formula, which you have to memorize, to find the number of terms. So there are 50 terms from 1 to 50. Either way, step 3 is multiply. 25.5 times 50. You can use my long multiplication method in another video if you're doing the GMAT, or for the GRE, just use a calculator and that gets you the right answer of 1,275. Okay, let's step it up a notch and do a harder example. Sum of a series. What is the sum of the even numbers from 10 to 100? Now, I've left the formula on screen, but for future questions, you won't see the formula because I'll expect you to memorize it. And it better be in that notepad. <laughs> anyway, the middle term is the first thing we're gonna find out by doing last term plus first term divided by two. Notice it's always divided by two. Doesn't matter if we're dealing with evens or integers, whatever, it's always divide by 2. So the last term is 100, the first term is 10, 100 plus 10 divided by 2 is 55. So the middle term is 55. So we're going to pretend that every single even number from 10 to 100 is actually just the number 55. So how many 55 do we have? How many number of terms do we have? Well, we do last term minus first term divided by increment plus 1. Last term is 100, first term is 10, 100 minus 10 is 90, divided by the increment, and the increment is 2 here because we're going up by 2 each time. We're dealing with every even number, not every single number. 90 divided by 2 is 45, 45 plus 1 is 46, and that's why we need a formula. It's not obvious that there are 46 even numbers from 10 to 100, but with the formula we can be confident that there are. Very quickly, just to recap why that formula works. The last term minus the first term gives you the range, as in how many integers in total are there in that range. We divide by the increment because we're not always wanting every single integer in that range. Sometimes we just want every other integer. So here we divide it by 2. And the reason we add 1 is because it's inclusive, including the first and the last. So that's why the formula exists. Either way, step 3 is always to multiply. 55 times 46 is 2530. And that is the sum of all the even numbers from 10 to 100. And again, if I asked you to use your mobile phone, you still wouldn't get it right, right? Without this formula, if I told you to add up the even numbers from 10 to 100, let's be honest, before this video, you might have just done 10 plus 12 plus 14 plus 16 and been there forever. But now you have the formula. Okay, let's do an even harder example. What is the sum of the multiples of 6 between 20 and 80? Okay, well here... The actual hard thing is to find out what the first term and the last term is. Some of you are thinking, well, isn't the first term 20 and the last term 80? No, because we only want the multiples of 6, and neither 20 nor 80 are multiples of 6. 
So what is the first multiple of 6 between 20 and 80? It will be 24. What is the last multiple of 6 between 20 and 80? Obviously, this relies a bit on your times tables, but it would be 78. And to be honest, the way that I would work that out is just to do 6 times 10 is 60, and then add on a few 6s until we get to our limit of 80. 60, 66, 72, 78. So the last multiple of 6 between 20 and 80 was 78. Just counting up, basically. Now we have our first and last term. We follow the method. Now, let's test your memory. How do we find the middle term? We do last plus first divided by 2. 78 plus 24 divided by 2 is 51. How do we find the number of terms? I'll let you look at your notes if you've forgotten, but for the next question, we're not even going to look at your notes. Okay, number of terms is last term, take away first term, divided by the increment plus 1. Last term is 78, first term is 24. The increment is 6 because we're looking at the multiples of 6, so the gap between each term is 6. 78 minus 24 divided by 6 is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. So there are 10 terms in this list. Step 3, we multiply. 51 times 10 is 510. This example I chose just to illustrate that sometimes you have to work out the first term and the last term. They won't just hand it to you on a platter. Okay, the next few questions are going to be pretty expert level. So if you've understood everything so far and you're gunning for a good score, but not like a top, top score, then I don't want to confuse you with the rest of this video. I'm just very glad you've understood what's happened so far. This covers the vast majority of what you're going to be tested on in the GRE and GMAT. But let's do a harder level question. And questions like this came up in my real test at the highest level. Okay, what is the sum of the terms a1, a2, a3 up to a20 in the sequence a subscript k plus 1 equals a subscript k plus 1 for k is greater than or equal to 1 if a1 equals minus 54? Wow, that's a mouthful. If you're not used to sequence questions, by the way, I've done a separate video on sequences. But for now, I'll assume you know the basics of what a sequence means. That equation there, where it says a subscript k plus 1 equals a subscript k plus 1, means the next term, a k plus 1, equals the current term, a k, plus 1. Which sounds a lot simpler, right? The next term is just the current term plus 1. So we have a sequence going up in 1s. Now, a lot of you will be intimidated by the k is greater than or equal to 1. Don't worry about that. It just means... The sequence starts at 1. Don't worry about 0 or negative parts of the sequence. So we have a sequence that means going up by 1, and it starts with the first term. And the final part, a1 equals minus 54, just means the first term is minus 54. So now we have a question that seems a bit more familiar with the previous examples. We've got a sequence starting at minus 54, going up by 1. So minus 54, minus 53, minus 52, etc. And there are 120 terms in this sequence. Now, I'm sure by now you've memorized the formula about middle term and number of terms. And clearly we have the first term in the sequence being minus 54. The challenge is going to be to find the last term. We know that there are 120 terms in this sequence, and we know that it begins with minus 54, and we know it goes up by one each time by understanding sequences. As I said, again, I've got a video on sequences if you're not sure what the language means. Either way, how do we find the last term? Some of you are going to put your hand up and go, well, wouldn't the last term just be minus 54 plus 120, right? Because there's 120 terms. Not quite. Even though there are 120 terms, we only add on 119. We always add on one less than the number of terms. Why? Because if we're starting at the first term and going up to the 120th term, that represents 119 jumps. So no, it's not as simple as just the first term plus 120. Let me illustrate that with an easier example. If I said I've got three numbers beginning with the number 1, and it's going up by 1 each time, what's the biggest number? Well, it's not 4, is it? We don't just get the first term 1 and then say, oh, there's three numbers in the list, so 1 plus 3 is 4, the biggest term is 4. No, we can see clearly that the three numbers would be 1, 2, and 3. How do we get that? not by doing 1 plus 3 because there are three terms. We do 1 plus 2 
because we always add on one less than the number of terms, giving us this formula. The last term is the first term plus the number of terms minus one. What about that bracket times increment? Well, that just covers the fact that if we're jumping by two each time, we do the number of jumps or the number of terms minus one times the increment. We'll cover that in more detail in a second. Essentially, I don't want to confuse you. If you're ever in doubt about what the last term of a sequence is, and unlike the last question, we can't just use some times table knowledge to work it out, but we know the number of terms. All you do, like in this sequence, we know there's 120 terms. All you do is the first term, which is minus 54 in this case, plus the number of terms, which is 120, take away one. Now, some of you won't even need this formula to work out the last term, so I don't want to overcomplicate things. This is just for those who like to have a very solid methodical approach to these questions. From now on though, we're gonna be using the formula that you're familiar with. The middle term is the first term plus the last term divided by two. Using our formula, the last term is minus 54, that's the first term, plus 120, take away one, which is 65. Middle term, minus 54 plus 65, divided by two gives us 5.5. So the middle term, going from minus 54 up to 65 is actually 5.5, following the formula. The number of terms is 120, we can see that clearly. We didn't need to deduce that because we can see it clearly, we're going from one to 120, there are 120 terms. Multiplying those, we get 660 for the total. If this complication about the last term is confusing to you, don't worry too much because it only comes up at the very hardest level. Usually the last term is pretty obvious. The key thing I want you to remember is about the middle term times the number of terms. Have a great day.